13 Lectures on General History of China by Liu Zheng Chapter 9 The Liao, Jin, and Yuan Dynasties 1. The Imperial Examination System in the Liao, Jin, and Yuan Dynasties The Liao, Jin, and Yuan Dynasties were the empires founded by minorities in northern China. The rulers of the three dynasties to some extent adopted the political system and social practice of the northern and southern Song. Meanwhile, their traditional social and political customs challenged the moribund components of Han Chinese political systems. The Liao Dynasty, 907-1125 AD was an empire found by the Qi Dan ethnic minority which had been headed alternatively by the chieftain, Khan, and the governors of the eight constituent tribes until the great Khan Yelu Abao Ji set up an imperial system. However, the succession of throne retained the customs in Qi Dan tribe. Due to the very close relationship between the Yelu royal family and the Shao clan to which the Empress's family belonged. The latter had a superior position in the Lao's political system. Sinicization was undertaken within a very limited scope in the Liao dynasty. To be specific, there were two parallel governments. The Northern Administration governed the Qi Dan areas following the traditions of the Qi Dan, while the Southern Administration governed areas with large non-Qi Dan populations adopting traditional Chinese governmental practices. The titles of Northern officials, Bei Mi and Guan, in the northern administrative area could be inherited by their sons according to the traditional ethnic minority hereditary. While southern officials, Nan Mi and Guan, were chosen by the imperial examination. The imperial examination of the Liao was set up for the Han Chinese rather than the Qi Dan clan and retained most of the system of the Song imperial examination, taking place every two or three years. The Liao imperial examination was divided into three levels, county level examination, Shangxi, provincial level examination, Fu Shi, and national examination, Wei Shi. The imperial court examination was added later on. The Jin Dynasty, 1115 to 1234 AD, was founded by the Wanyan clan of the Jurchens. The tribal council remained for a while after the foundation of the empire. Emperor Zizong of Jin, 1135 to 50 AD, did his best to promote the policy of sinicization by abolishing the tribal council and established the system of crown princes as the essential succession policy. The imperial examination took place once every three years on four levels. The county level examination, the provincial level examination, national examination, and the imperial court examination. The Jurchen people attended an examination which separate from the examination court of the Han Chinese. The imperial examination in the Jin dynasty functioned with much more influence upon the politics than that in the Liao dynasty. This was owing to the much higher level of sinicization in the former. The Yuan Dynasty, 1205-1368 AD, previously a dynasty of Great Mongolia, was founded by the Mongolians after a series of conquering wars. Although Emperor Shizu of Yuan, better known as Kublai Khan, 1260-94 AD, accepted the Han Chinese political systems, 
The Yuan Dynasty maintained the Tribal Council of the Tribal Alliance. An example of this was that the crowned prince did not assume the throne until he had been accepted by the tribal council. The superlative power of chancellor in the Yuan dynasty can be seen in the system whereby the chancellor often was appointed to the post of secretary of the privy council and the senior general of safeguarding army in local governance. The distinguishing development was the setting up of administrative provinces by which the territory of the Yuan dynasty was divided into the central region as the Duchy of the Secretariat and eleven provinces under control of various branch secretariats. In the Yuan government, most officials were drawn from among the officers employed for the safeguarding the army or the clerks who had no official ranking titles. In addition, on the grounds that graduates of the imperial examination were discriminated against politically by the Mongols, the former had no advantage in the bureaucratic system. Greater emphasis was laid upon the clerks, who occupied the greater number of positions in the bureaucratic system of the Yuan dynasty. In ancient Chinese government, the tension between the scholar officials and the non-scholar staff developed to its peak in the Yuan dynasty even though this had begun to appear in the Qin and Han dynasties. In general, the scholar officials were recruited into the government by passing the rigorous imperial examination which required that the young candidates had been cultivated by the Confucian classics for many years. The scholar officials, therefore, had the moral advantage but lacked practical skills. 2. In the legal systems of the Liao, Jin, and Yuan primitive features remained in the legal systems of the Liao, Jin, and Yuan despite the fact that these were assimilated from the Tang and Song dynasties. Some uncompleted regulations and edicts had been stipulated since Emperor Zizong of Jin. It was not until the Taihe era of the late Jin dynasty that Emperor Zhongzong ordered to codify the systematic Taihe laws. There was no edited regulation in the early Yuan dynasty until Emperor Shizu of Yuan, Kublai Khan, compiled the Ji Yuan New Punishments. Emperor Yingzong of Yuan ordered the compilation of two codes. The collection of laws of the Yuan dynasty and general regulations of the great Yuan dynasty. Paying less attention to their inheritance from their predecessors. The rulers abandoned most of the content of the Tang and Song laws and depended mainly on the traditional Mongolian judgments, cases. In terms of punishments, most corporal punishments were restored in the Yuan dynasty. 3. An analysis of aspects of social life in the Yuan dynasties the Mongolians and Simu, general name for the ethnic groups other than Mongolians and Han people, enjoyed priorities in the society of the Yuan dynasty. They also fixated upon material pleasure and enjoyed instant gratification and happiness. The intellectuals who could not achieve success in political field also followed this trend and only tried to seize temporary happiness. The ideas of Laozi and Zhuangzi were highly appreciated at that moment. The essence of those ideas was a free and easy lifestyle in a spirit of not seeking fame and wealth, but rather paying attention to leisure and comfort. In the middle and later Yuan dynasty, the Taoist religion was dominated by Zhen Yi Dao and Quan Zhen Dao. 
This trend continued after the Ming dynasty. When the different sects of the Taoist religion were reconciled, the reconciliation of Taoism with Confucianism and with the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama gathered pace. Internal alchemy became the focal point of Taoist doctrine and principles. The Quan Jin Dao of the Ming Dynasty was very active around the Wudang Mountains in Hubei Province. From the late Ming Dynasty onwards, the political status of the Taoist religion gradually fell. And it remained derisory during the Qing Dynasty and the era of the Republic of China.